Call out to this one for a leak. It's one of my installs, it's approximately four years old now, the 6V. But on the early models, this is a common problem. So, the elbow they supply with a boiler, it just goes, I don't even say it's brittle, it's like jelly. Slime even. The white ones were, like I say, off the first models of Baxi 600s. They superseded it with the black one. So I keep these off the van off other installs that have not needed it for moments like this. on like chewing gum I don't know why must react with the condensate water but like I say they superseded this with the black one now that could be it really um, a warranty call out because at the end of the day it's not my prop fault that something they've supplied isn't fit for purpose but I always come out just to check it's nothing I've done or something that won't be under warranty and because it's only an elbow we'll just swap this out but on to the next one What's up guys, it's uh, Tuesday morning after the bank holiday. A few little jobs to do on this house. Well, in fact, this is a bit of a list. <laughs> Kitchen sink taps to change, ball valve to change in the toilet and add an isolation valve on Flexi. Um, chemicals to add to a system, which the customer has got. This CalMag it seems to do noise reducing, redu reduction, protection, restoration. Does a bit of everything. Anyway, we've got to add that into Zish. Well, that's had a style system with a cylinder behind us. Um, kitchen sink tap to change and a leaking check valve to the outside tap. I'll try and get some content for you. This is a stop tap for the house. They're not very common, but sometimes in new builds they are. It's a quarter turn when that's pointing up vertical, in theory, should be off. No actual stop tap in the house. Utilities box key to get into them. That's obviously with water off now. These are on rigid tap tails, so the new one's got flexes. I'm going to cut them off here and get some isolation valves on purely because there isn't any. And, yeah, I need to connect on to something. So quite a, water, a lot of water left in the, uh, in the pipe work. Quickly get an isolation valve on. Obviously with it shut off. I've got my buckets and towels underneath at the bottom. Always be prepared. These are tech-type fittings, kind of like a speed fit. They've got an O-ring in, so they do spin, just like a speed fit or a plastic fitting would. Just spin that out of the way to get onto the cold now. I've marked up my pipes before teching, disconnecting these. Quite, You can quite easily uh, lose yourself once you've cut them off. God knows where this water's coming from. Gathers a bit of air and boosh, straight over the top of the bucket. Tried to get it out of that fin, but it wasn't for having it, so I just cut it off and get the uh, valve oven in position. Speed fit tap flexes for this one. <laughs> Yay. Massive nut to, mat to tighten it to the bottom of the sink. Absolutely hate these. Fucking pain in the ass. 
can't get. I had to take one of the flexes out just to get the nut on because both speed fit connections wouldn't fit through. Just leaking from here. I'm on this jet valve. Can't repair it, so just swap it out. We'll just take note for the newbies. Got directional arrows on them. With them, because there's no actual tool you can get on with them, you just have to hand tighten it and then actually spin the top of the tap to the position you want. It's not focusing. I've got some of them flexes on, it's looking a bit chewed up because I had to push them through the plastic nut. 245 streets. So that oh, there across like that, I think. So this is the uh, ball valve I've got to replace. That's got a nice isolation valve on it as well. Still the kill up behind it. Ah, cut it off and put a flexi on. That's a bit of sauce, doesn't it? Right. Sometimes these pop out as they're screwing. Sometimes they actually screw in. Sometimes they just lift off. This isn't lift enough, so... Oh, it's a long screw. Yeah. Torbeck. Crap. Obviously, I've still got the water off from... Down... Oh, I've changed the tap downstairs. I'm gonna cut this off out of the way. Dregs left in it, that's why you always have a towel. Probably coming out of the ball valve itself, it should just undo off. It should by hand. I wonder if it's full of silicone. Got the washer's goosed in that. Yep. Okay, cat packs, she is constantly running. Alright, so I'm going to be replacing it with the Fluid Master brass shank. Customer supplied this. He, the reason why I've got this job is because he works with emergents, so hence why I've not supplied anything. So sometimes these Fluid Master ball valves catch on the side if that's pushed too far in. What I have done in the past 
Let's get the old back nut, pull it forward and place that up there. Keeps it off. But I'm just kidding, she doesn't need it. All right. So that's all in, I'd shorten it back. That's why I didn't get any footage because obviously I decided to stop that's passing it, pissed out all over. So I had to be quick. I have to advise them there's definitely uh, a leak from that system somewhere when stripping down, but it's a bit rusty. Get water back on now, test this and test that kitchen tap on the jet valve, then move on to the boiler side of things. Before I turn the water on, might as well recharge this. You only have to turn it back off again to do it. It doesn't sound full of water, but we'll get it checked and dated because obviously it's part of the service. On an unvented cylinder. All the instructions are here. Nice. It's charged to three bar as a rule. This has got a data sticker on it, which this one has. Four bar, recommended. I think it's a valent product to this. Anyway, it says four bar. For those that don't know the drill, we're recharging a potable vessel on an unvented cylinder. Water off, either the stop tap to the full house or the stop tap to the unbent cylinder itself. Water off, open a hot tap or outlet. Obviously recharge it. 3.15 3 bar. This is showing and obviously once before, so we'll recharge to four. Check your trader valve after for leaks. That's that bit done. I've never worked on one of these Magna Clean filters this style anyway. So let's get it shut off. My plan is to try and get this chemical inside here. Of course, the valve's now leaking. inside this one. See that on the camera? And the plan is the plan. Where on earth is the rubber? It's the OR. A bit of PTFE feedback on the servant. Screwed it back in. Got most of that um, chemical into the boiler. Try not cross the bed, thread this because it's plastic in it. My main concern now is that dripping isolation valve. Hopefully it'll stop when I turn it back on. But this is what really winds me up about materials these days, especially isolation valves. You don't turn them off. Because this happens. Still weeping, so sometimes just tapping them will get them to seal. I'm hoping that'll work. Looking at it, I reckon you could undo that nut and strip it down, possibly get to the O-rings. That'd be a serviceable part of this. Mm. 
think that is definitely still leaking. There's an O-ring in that, but I'm not sure how much it'll seal. Let's try packing that with PTFP, I think. Oh, I don't know for the best. I don't know what I'm right. So I think I've re what I've effectively done is repack the gland. It seems to have worked. That will leak in. It's decided to stop itself, thankfully. One to watch out for on balance is that's rear. This is your heating return pipe. But what happened, what used to happen is, or what does happen, it melts and makes the uh, condensate pipe drip, drip, uh, brittle. Then the condensate pipe splits, it drips. This here is your gas valves. So when this little bottom of the case <laughs> fills it with, with condensate water it rots away this uh, copper and obviously that, with that being the gas it's not um, it's not ideal it's what I normally do a bit of pipe insulation on top of this return pipe and it just lifts and keeps that away from the heat <laughs> 